Welcome. Today we're going to talk about the read later service called Omnivore. Now, lots of people use a read later service of some fashion. Uh, Zotero is a fairly popular one, especially with academics, because it lets you have a lot of heavy citation management. But honestly, a lot of people don't need that. They need something simple just to save your links. And then even you know, in addition with Omnivore, just do your highlights. So let's talk about that. Before we do, a few ways to support the channel. Number one, become a member, curtisnakale.ca slash membership. Take my courses, including how I take notes like this, or take a course on your own, curtisnakale.ca slash education. Or you can go to get my weekly thoughts and my weekly newsletter, curtismichael.ca slash three number dash threads. Buckle up, let's dive into Omnivore. So this is Omnivore. This is the web um, site that you get to when you start up. It is an open source read later app. You can see this is gives you a tour of the interface, the iPhone, the Mac or uh, app or the web app really uh, as well. You can save it now. You can read letter, get all your newsletters in one place because they provide a newsletter email if you want to do that. You can keep your reading organized, whatever that means to you. Add highlights to your notes, syncs with your second brain, right? There's a LogSec and Lipsidian um, extension for it. it. Does some speech to text, which I never tried because I don't do that. Uh, it has open source means that you're in control. Sort of. Technically, you can host Omnivore, but reading through the GitHub comments, and there is a link in the written version of this post. It sounds like that is more theoretical than actually practical at the moment. So theoretically, you can host this, but practically, it's going to be a lot of work and it's going to be really hard. So eh, I kind of put a maybe on, but that you can actually host it. Well, you can come over to GitHub and make, um, you know, make issues. You could theoretically submit code to it as well if you are capable of doing that. Now, as far as a monetization plan, they don't have one at the moment. Um, they have a contribute page for financial reasons that you can do through GitHub. Uh, if you're signed up and based on the, my back of the napkin math, which is accurate to say the least, it has about $335 a month of support, maybe. Uh, and that's not that much. That, uh, I got a couple kids and a dog and a house. That doesn't pay for anything around here. That doesn't pay for like the, the coffee we drink in a month, ultimately, probably between my wife, myself, and my oldest daughter, who also drinks coffee. So I'm not so sure about the long-term health. They talk about AI, other hand-wavy magic features they're going to do. I'd honestly rather pay $3 a month for Sync if you want Sync through their platform. And then I'm actually paying for something. I am the customer. Now let's dive into how we get content into Omnivore. That was the Omnivore web app inbox. Let's just go to my site because that's a good one and I can trust the content there. And let's go to my review of Chris Dixon's Read Write Ohm. And the way you get to it is via the browser extension right here, Omnivore Save Article in Firefox. It's also available in Chrome or any Chromium-based browser. So Edge it would work in as well. I can click that. That lets me add a note if I want to, set my labels or tags, right? I can come in here and say this is actually, uh, what is this, blockchain? I, have a block, I don't have blockchain. And, and crypto. Oh. Crypto would be the other one. And then I can say done. Just hit the X. And I have now saved this. If I come over here, I'll have to refresh. There you go. Tech Bros want us to trust this idea. Now in iOS, iPadOS, you can use the share sheet. Hit the arrow, share it to Omnivore. It does essentially the same thing for you. There is also an Android app that is in beta at the moment. So I don't have Android either. I haven't tried it, but it's there. It sounds like it works just fine. Now, theoretically, Omnivore can handle any content on the web, including PDFs. Practically, there's a bunch of PDFs that just haven't loaded into it for me. I have no idea why I spend a bunch of time trying to figure it out so I could give you like good details on it. I don't know. Some of them just don't work. So I stopped saving PDFs in here because it just was not working. Now, in addition to the web app you see here, there is actually Omnivore for Mac OS. This is the app. It's really basic. It doesn't look nearly as nice as the web version you have here. It has no search, right? So you can see I'm up in the search. So I could search uh, plastic, right? It got something with plastic, but it doesn't even get this article right here. Plastic experts say recycling is a scam. Didn't get that one. The other thing it doesn't do is if I hit oh, escape here, right? there's no way to really, oh, we're in the interface now. All right, so now, now we can start getting through the interface that's it. It doesn't have great keyboard controls. Ultimately, I am really a keyboard focused user. I freely admit this. I use an app called Homero on Mac OS so that I can like click and navigate on the interface with my keyboard without needing to touch my mouse. 
So it's a detriment to me that there's not good keyboard navigation here. Now on iOS, iPadOS, Omnivore's fine. That's it, it's touch focused. There's no keyboard controls. There's some iPad issues with the UI that just don't look right, especially if you use it in Stage Manager. Sometimes the cursor will be like 10 lines off where it actually thinks it's going. So it, it's fine. It's not great though. So the real power in Omnivore comes in the reading and highlighting. Let's just go to one of my articles and we'll come in here and we'll say Airbnb. Let's just highlight this. I have my choice of colors or I can hit note here or I can copy it. Let's just take a note. I'll say this is my note. Save. So now I have that and I can open up. I we'll actually have Obsidian open on a second window. So let me pop that out into another window, open a new window my notes for it and bring over the rest of Obsidian. So now we can look at the Obsidian ob extension. And so I can come in here and I can type command P, I can say sync, Omnivore sync new changes. And now mine is techno bros. I need to find the right one. I want to trust this idea. So you can see my highlight and this is my note. That's great. Now here's an issue though. If I come in here and I want to say, let's go with cryptocurrency and blockchain, and this relates to the book, read, write, own by Chris Dixon. So I've got this. Now if I do omnivore and say sync, resync all articles, It wiped out my tags. I, <laughs> great. Now I don't have the tags or any other notes I took technically in my note isn't there. I don't love that. I actually love how Readwise works with their Kindle Sync better where it uh, appends new notes to the bottom if you've read something new. It puts a date in there and says, here's a new chunk of the notes. Here's a new chunk. Here's a new chunk. That's it. It doesn't actually overwrite anything you have in your OmniFocus database or OmniFocus um, <laughs> Obsidian database. It keeps all your data right there for you so you don't mess it up. So I actually didn't realize this at the beginning, took a bunch of notes in notes, and I lost them a long time ago, which is why I just did the resync now because they're already gone. Nothing I can do about it. So my final question, as always, is, is uh, Omnivore a good read later app? I think it's fine. Uh, the web app is good, actually. Probably that's the best app. The Mac OS, iPad OS apps, not the best. They are acceptable, <laughs> but barely. They're just there to say they're there. That's it. I don't think they're actually worth a lot. They are okay. Web app is good, which is good because I use Linux on this machine beside me and there's no app for Linux. The highlights are a big pain in the ass because they get overwritten all the time. The again, the iPad OS app is a big pain in the ass, especially in Stage Manager, because the cursor doesn't line up with where you're looking at. Pain in the ass. You can't actually practically self-host it. I'm a developer. I work with a lot of the technologies these guys have, and I looked at self-hosting it and went, no, no, forget this. It's just going to be a whole bunch of work that I'm not going to do, and I'm not going to be able to maintain well. So it's again marginally self-hosted. Now, if you're okay with these trade-offs, if you're happy with using web apps, if you never take notes in your notes, right, never tag a note extra or add anything else, then Omnivore is fine. It's fine. That's it. That's all I can say. It's fine. It's not stellar. It's not a big standout one. It is okay.